You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 12th, 2024. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're on Blue Sky now. And if you'd like to join us, we'll show you the way. Come join us, come join us, just take a part and join us. <laughs> it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue we are on Blue Sky, and we are on Blue Sky as Pro Left Podcast, uh-huh. and also uh, as bl- I'm Blue Gal, just one word, Blue Gal, uh-huh. and Drift Glass is Drift Glass, so no yeah. more Mister Electrico nonsense. We're gonna just go with Drift Glass. Hey, all of my aliases, I love them all equally, Blue Gal. Equally, so. I'm sure you yeah. do. But, but Drift Glass is more brand friendly, I will say. It is. And and that's what we're all about is <laughs> Branding, promoting that brand. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Can't you tell? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, we would like to thank Hal Sparks for his Monday night show, which was last night from where mm-hmm. we're recording. Um, November 11th. If you're listening to this at any time, it's the November 11th evening live stream of Hal Sparks. Highly recommend you go listen to it. Uh, he lit a fire under all of us. Get off Twitter now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can download your uh, Twitter files and history and so forth first. And uh, the goal is to get everybody completely gone by Thanksgiving. Yeah. And yep. and he really turned us around emotionally by uh-huh. giving us a task. <laughs> Something to do. Something to do. A yeah. call to action. And can you explain what he was talking about when he talked about everybody go watch The Martian? Sure. Well, he he was very clear that um, the the, uh, remaining on Twitter makes money for Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. If you're there or not, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, you're a body on there. You count. Any engagement you do is money in his pocket. And that's the only profitable business he has outside of government welfare. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what he, he was, he was also adamant that we all go watch The Martian, which, you know, you mean for the seventeenth time? How? Right. How many times have we watched The Martian? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it was the 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 bit at the end. I think he's referring to that where he's he's teaching a class. He's talking about solving problems. You know, and you, first you solve the first problem, and you solve the second problem, and you solve the third problem, and eventually, if you solve all the problems, you get to come home. Mm-hmm. And it is you take one thing at a time. You don't do everything at once. You you apply your brains and your abilities to the problem at hand. What is the immediate problem at hand? Is it, I have a large piece of metal sticking through my stomach, so I need to get that out. And how do I get that properly? And how do I feed myself? And how do I communicate? It's one problem at a time. Solve one problem at a time. Hopefully, you're in community with millions of other people who are doing the same thing. And hopefully mm-hmm. we're all sort of talking to each other and we're getting problems solved one at a time. And yep. it is a really valid and focusing exercise to look yep. around you and say, what can I do today? Yep. And one of the things we discovered, I mean, we knew we could do today, but we didn't have to, we weren't putting it off anymore was get the fuck off Twitter. Yep. Now we understand that there are people on there who have deep roots there whose entire brand or entire whatever livelihood at that, which is a shame if that's true, but who just don't know how to do long form writing apparently in any other format who do like 20 um, post threads of their big ideas. And I have been sending those people uh, links to a thing called blogger. Which, <laughs> yeah, you have, you yeah, have. Yes. It's like Twitter, but longer and your shit doesn't go away. If Elmo decides to punish you. Mm-hmm. And I know it's old school, but you know what? Paper and pencil don't get deleted. <laughs> you know, yep. Yep. Your, your diary, your handwritten diary doesn't crash if you have a power outage and you can access it if there's if the power is off. And I have a blog. You have a blog. All God's children got blogs, honey. And if you really need to express yourself in more than 
300 words or characters or whatever the fuck the limit is, 180 something, something, as I frequently do. Sometimes I would do two or three threads, two or three posts, because that was all I had to say. But I've got a blog and anybody can have one. It doesn't cost anything. And you go out there and you can say whatever you want, 300 words, 1,000 words, 10,000 words, and then you publish it and it creates a link. And then you link to drop that link at social media. And I know there are people out there who are just like, I don't want to click anything. If it's not right in front of me, I don't want it. I don't want to click it. Fine. You're too fucking lazy. I'm sorry. That's not my problem. That's a you problem. But it's one mouse click away. And if that's too inconvenient for you, well, maybe that's why we lost the election. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't go that far. No, no. But it's that kind of like, yeah. You are working a little bit against some human nature there, Drift Glass. But yeah, I yes, I, I hear I you. You know, and and uh, I am concerned, as some of my colleagues are, that uh, deleting my account uh-huh. means someone else can park there as blue right. gal and right. be a Nazi or whatever. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, turning it to private and then just getting off and and not doing anything anymore. Right, just parking Um, it there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, if you have to keep it active by typing something and then deleting it later, then that's what you do. But honestly, get off and and, uh, don't give Elmo any ability to say, I've got these eyeballs here, you know, because he he doesn't deserve them. He's a Nazi and he's ruining this country. And if you need to share something... Take a screenshot, crop the yeah. screenshot, put the screenshot over on Blue Sky. Right. Um, right. I probably will keep my Twitter account there private. And I may mm-hmm. do like just send a, a random pulse through it every now and then to keep it alive so no one else can uh, come in and, you know, squat on my, right. my account. But I have no intention of cooperating with the administration. And in any Elon way. Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion dollars to turn it into a right wing cesspool and he yep. has succeeded. Yeah. And yep. if 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 you can't do that if you feel you must stay and fight, you know, a million orcs to prove something, that's fine. I, I'm not nobody's ordering you to do it, but it would be a really good idea if you just absented yourself from there because if you want to have arguments or fights or debates with people like substantively, Threads looks a lot like Twitter. Yeah, and so does Blue I'm sorry. Sky. I'm sorry. Blue yeah. Sky looks a lot like Twitter. It does. And you can and you can have all the arguments you want, and and all and of the also best there's are, the block feature. There's all kinds of. I mean, right. it's very similar. So and all the yeah. all the best people are there. I mean, all the coolest yeah. people are the there. cool people. And apparently, uh, over seven hundred thousand people have signed up with Blue Sky since the election. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I expect that to double what? within by Thanksgiving. What I would like to not have happen, um, which I can't prevent, I'm just saying if I wish, I wish, I wish, is that the ridiculous um, hierarchies that form when a large number of people gather in one place would not replicate themselves on Blue Sky. Yeah, you and I have been through that yeah. a few times. On, I don't know if iter- we can stop that from happening, but they they don't have any billionaires on their board now. They've just yeah, gotten, they've just asked the last billionaire to leave. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's something. And it's um, free. It's free. And it's free. It's don't free. It costs nothing. Blogger nope. costs nothing. And Blue Sky costs nothing. And it's all very easy to do. And don't be reluctant. If you yeah. need to sort of transition for a while, keep a foot in both worlds, that's fine. I'm doing that right now. But I'm also... Nope. We also I, have a deadline, a how deadline. A how deadline. Of Thanksgiving. Well, I, yeah. And I, I, I'm waiting for my um, download permission to come through yeah. on Twitter. So We've that got 700,000 people in line waiting to do that. Oh, I know. <laughs> They're it's, so it's close ridiculous. to it. Yeah. And yeah. I will put all of my tweets and all of my history on a zip drive. Yeah. And I'll keep it in my back pocket. And if I ever need it, if I need to have art, I try to do my artwork um, or my graphics in a way that is on my blog or it's on a hard drive. Yeah. Like the laptop sitting in front of me is full of graphics and full of mm-hmm. stuff I wrote. Um, so that it wouldn't, so this wouldn't happen. It wouldn't all be lost. Um, you know, so yeah. I, I uh, it comes highly recommended from the people you're listening to right now. Um, yeah. yeah. You'll have no problem with the interface of blue sky. If you've been on Twitter, period, this has been another, you know, that's good. Our fake sponsor, blue sky. Welcome to blue sky. <laughs> 
this guy will make your dick three inches longer. It's it's just great. It'll make your breasts beautiful and it'll make you your cheeks hear, flush. Can you, can you hear my eyes rolling, folks? It'll, from, it'll give you a full head of hair. <laughs> just don't look at my picture. It'll, it, they promised me a full head of hair, Blue Gal, and <laughs> full hair, head of lush blonde hair. Uh, now, that's the advice we're giving you now. So our advice from our pre-election podcast last Tuesday was as follows. The future is coming. It will be here before you know it. And since no one can predict the future, but everyone wants to know what the future will bring, the best we can do is examine the present and see what we can see. Drift Glass, you sound like Gavin Newsom when you talk like that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Blue Gal. I'm not sure how to take that. Um, anyway, to continue... A political campaign, especially a long political campaign, is a refining process. And week after week, messages get distilled and sharpened until they are as clear as it is possible to make them. And this doesn't just apply to candidates and campaigns. It's also true of people who cover politics. It's true of pundits and critics and even voters. The stupid get stupider, the angry get angrier, and the determined get more determined. Well, that future has arrived. And what does it look like? In other words, it's a huge shit sandwich and we're all going to have to take a bite. The pundits reacted exactly how you would expect them to act. Over on liberal MSNBC, before the election, the Morning Joe crew were praising Kamala Harris for that flawless campaign she had run. Amazing. She's amazing. Just, she was She's great. Awesome. She raised a billion dollars. She de- unified the party. It was just you, all so awesome. Did you see Liz Cheney up there? Oh, my God. She's got this yeah. in the bag. Oh, my God. This is yeah. great. She's yeah. reached out to everybody. So after the election, did they thank her? No. 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 They dogpiled on her. And, you know, it's, it's the latte-sipping limousine liberal woke left talking down to the proles. How dare they? They lost mm-hmm. this election for, for us. Um, yeah, the credulous, as you said, the credulous idiot voters got stupider, the rage drunk voters got angry, and the ter- determined got more determined. And everybody with a megaphone has their own bespoke hot takes on what the fuck just happened. And most of them were predictably terrible. They were. A lot of, as you might imagine, because uh, all the votes aren't even counted yet. By the time all the votes in California and Pennsylvania are actually counted, it looks like the loss um, Democrats will have lost by like 1%, mm-hmm. um, give or take, um, which is not a landslide. It's bad. It's very bad. But it's not Reagan in 1984 mm-hmm. uh, and not even close. Um, however, the circular firing squads formed or the firing squad to take down the latte sipping liberal lefties. So, uh, for example, the pod save lads sounded very much like this. And I've listened to a whole bunch of podcasts in the last few days. They sounded like Okay, you get two minutes of commercial, and then everyone is stupid. And then you get three minutes of commercial, and everyone is wrong. Then you get two minutes of commercials, and then coastal liberal snobs using very big words is why we lost, coming from a bunch of coastal liberal snobs who use nothing but big words, which is hilarious. Then you get two more minutes of commercial. Then you get like and subscribe to this podcast. So, you know, I just, (laughs) I can't. I just can't. They are insufferable. They truly are insufferable. (laughs) Yep. Uh, so are you in LA? No, I'm not in LA. No, like and no. subscribe. Yeah. I flew I flew up to San Francisco for the weekend to, just to get away from everything. Mm-hmm. Like and subscribe. Plus we've got merch. <laughs> How about those damn coastal elites? <laughs> Here is the morally flexible Fareed Zakaria towing the party line of the newly magified CNN. Quote, why did Harris lose? My take Democrats blew it by making three big mistakes, not taking immigration concerns seriously enough, rallying around prosecutions of Trump, and elevating identity politics. Yeah. Unquote. Mm -hmm. Except, of course, none of that actually happened. No. I I don't know what campaign Fareed Zakaria was watching, Um, but he's clearly working from a script. He he left out the trans stuff, too. (laughs) Yeah. You know, they didn't leave but, out the trans stuff on Morning Joe, though. No, it, it's just it's 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 sad and uh, pathetic. Politico. Here's Politico. Guess what Politico did? They went right on being Politico. Quote: Can Trump be the new Reagan? Unquote. No, he can't. No, no, I, no. But you know that's that's Politico. What do you want? Yeah. 
And as you might imagine, there was an absolute orgy, an orgy of hippie punching at the New York Times. I did a whole um, collage of all the headlines of all the people on the on, on on two days who just couldn't stop themselves from from venting their spleen on you and me, Blue Gal, on us. Because mm-hmm. we are, of course, latte sipping, coastal liberal elites who use big words and have college degrees. Um, this is from Brett Stevens, quote, a party of prigs and pontificators suffers a humiliating, humiliating defeat, unquote. And if you know Brett Stevens, you know there is no bigger prig and pontificator on the East Coast of this country than Brett fucking Stevens. Uh, now, his odious wife, Pamela Paul, also is has a wife New York Times or ex-wife? Com- I'm sorry, ex-wife. His ex-wife. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but his ex-wife, Pamela Paul, who is a I, – I stick by odious blue gal. Mm-hmm. She is the ex-wife, but she's – a horrible person. She, for some reason, also has a New York Times column. I don't know why, but this was her headline. Quote, Kamala Harris took women for granted. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm laughing so I don't cry. Yep. All right. And she has a, she, she and, uh, and her ex-husband both pulled down large paychecks from. I was going to say, she got paid to write that, didn't she? she? Did. You know who now else got I paid to write cry. a column? Maureen Dowd. Uh, in fact, this was the Maureen Dowd column that the Morning Joe ghouls were drooling over. Quote, Democrats in the case of mistaken identity politics. The postmortem is a wake for woke. Unquote. <sighs> what a bitch. What an absolute <laughs> useless bitch. Yep. And and by the way, those Morning Joe ghouls who are all going to get a bigger tax cut from Donald Trump. Uh, Jeff Jarvis had something to say about them on the socials. Quote, Mm -hmm. oh, Lord, on Morning Joe, Mika reads an entire noxious Dowd column aloud. Anti-identity, anti-trans, anti-woke, anti-campus, which in the end is a defense of the Trumpists Mm -hmm. and their identity politics, a.k.a. racism. Mm -hmm. But we can't say that. Next, Al Sharpton who gave New York City Mayor Adams rants about latte liberals and the ivory, ivory tower, the Economist editor of all people, the editor of the Economist, mm-hmm. uh, sniffs at the elite milieu of the cultural left. What do you do for a living? I edit the Economist. <laughs> Joe, of course, mocked trans people and white fragility. And rants about being canceled as they cancel Democrats. Uh huh. That's that's the end of of Jeff Jarvis, uh, and it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, it's yep. it's an opportunity for people who on Monday thought Kamala Harris ran a flawless campaign. Uh huh. On Wednesday, saying those Democrats, those Democrats, they're just a bunch. They're just a bunch of latte elitists. Yeah, which is the oldest horriest, yeah. most toxic yeah. um, straw man in their arsenal. These are people who stopped paying Social Security taxes by Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Calling yep. me, who can barely afford her own health insurance, mm-hmm. an elitist. Yeah. Well, and, and complaining about being canceled. You know who's canceled? Joe Scarborough? Any liberal who was against the Iraq War. Yep. Going all the way back. People who yep. were actually right about you. And squint, and, yep. and and your meat puppet wife, and all the clowns you surround yourself with, the people who've been writing about that for years, and have been right all along, were the people that you will not allow anywhere near the megaphone. Because mm-hmm. we might start talking like we're talking right now. So don't cry me a fucking river about being canceled when you have four hours of television to yourself to put you and your clown friends on my liberal TV every fucking day. And now you have weekends. As well. So, no, you're, you're the, the furthest thing from being canceled. You're a loud, obnoxious, boorish, right-wing asshole. And I, you deserve everything you're, that's coming to you. Now, a couple of people did, did tell the truth. Michael Tomaski got it mostly right. Quote, it wasn't inflation or anything else. It was how people perceive those things. Which points to one overpowering answer, the right-wing media. Unquote. Yep. And we're going to yep. dwell on that. Oh, for the next five years, I'm sure. I think but we will. <laughs> it really is the case that that the superpower that this concentrated right-wing media has is double. 
One, they can find somebody living under a, a bridge and, and say, well, you know, I went to college and I sipped a lot of a lot, a lot of lattes. And then I decided to drop out, live off welfare because I, lo- I believe it's it's my right to do nothing with my life and you have to pay for that. They can find some shithole guy to do that. Mm-hmm. And that person will then become the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. Now, that's yep. half the problem. Yep. The other half of the problem is people like Joe fucking Scarborough saying this is something Democrats need to take seriously. And they yeah. need to message and message and message. And they need to, dis- they need to find a sister soldier and beat the shit out of her. And a this trans case, sister, person, a trans a, child. Yeah, and beat the crap out of them yeah. to prove to the brainwashed morons on Fox News that they're really not gay or trans or something awful, some terrifying communist menace, which will never happen because those people are lost to reason already. So the idea that anything we're going to tell them, anything we're going to do without a megaphone the size of fucking Saturn is going to move a mountain on this, um, um, move one vote on this continent is ludicrous. And mm-hmm. everyone knows it. So, but it's, you know, it's safe to beat up on liberals. It's yeah. easy to beat up on liberals because we have no ability to get up in Joe's face and make him physically and professionally uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he can just sit back in his chair and shit all over us. And there's not a thing we can do about it because there is no liberal media to push back. He thinks he's that, but he's not. Uh, now, uh, Soledad O'Brien, who should have her own show anywhere at any time, uh, did correct what Tomaski missed. She says, quote, yeah, this is wrong. It's multifactorial, obviously, and racism and misogyny played a role too. Yeah. Unquote. And Thomas Zimmer, who I believe is also on Blue Sky Blue Gal, oh. um, summed up what the pundits are doing. Quote: Compared to 2020, Trump's coalition was actually older, wealthier, and about equally white. Yeah. And yet, wealthier, wealthier, and wealthier. than 2016. Yeah. Yes. They're doing fine. They're doing great. But they're a bunch of bigoted old white guys who don't like the idea of a black president, much less a woman of color president. That is the end of their world as far as they're concerned. Mm-hmm. And so that's what they that's what they did. But uh, Mr. Zimmer continues, the conventional wisdom is quickly coalescing around ideas of a working class revolution, racial realignment, and young men's crisis of masculinity. He finishes, the punditry doesn't care about what really happened, unquote. And, and, that's and why- the idea that we are focusing that the media is mm-hmm. focusing on the dude bros crisis of masculinity mm-hmm. instead of on the crisis of women bleeding out in a hospital parking lot. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Kamala Harris uh, ignored women. Right. Well, and Barack Obama, maybe if he just proves once and for all with his long form birth certificate, he was born here, we can move on. But we can't move on. We can't move on from that one stupid thing because, well... That's what we do. We yep. latch on to some imaginary thing that some liberal did, and we beat it to death because Fox News tells us to. Because yep. Rupert Murdoch is runs MSNBC, practically speaking. Yeah. He sets the agenda of what they care about. Well, look, however awful our current situation is, and yeah, I'm pissed. I, I'm going through the anger stage of mourning right now. Yep. Um, if you're of a certain age, all of this sounds depressingly familiar because mm-hmm. this is the legacy, legacy media memory holding the scorched earth tactics the Republican Party used to try to destroy the Clinton administration. Yeah. So they could get on with fawning over George W. Bush. Yeah. Clinton was busy cleaning up the previous administration's mess, the giant deficits and all the shit that said they cared about. And all they wanted to talk about was the, the, his murder list. And yeah. Vince Foster, now yeah. all the drugs he was dealing, and and some he got a blowjob, blue gal. He got actually got a blowjob, and he didn't tell the truth about it. So that was an impeachable offense, um, and all of that was accelerated by the legacy media. This is also the legacy media memory holding the collapse of the W administration, so their own complicity would never be up for discussion. They don't want to talk about W because they were in on it. They helped him. They log rolled for him. They made him the hero that he never was. I just want to remind everybody that there's no fair remembering stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I want to talk about how the le- legacy media pretended the fake Tea Party was driven by concerns over being taxed too much mm-hmm. and not the overt racism that they were shouting right to the camera. And they were bankrolled by the Koch brothers and sponsored by Fox News. Yeah. And that is not something that 
the legacy media wanted to talk about it. They right. lied about it. They knew better. They fucking well knew better. They yeah. all knew better. They wanted to pretend it was a grassroots uprising against that bad Kenyan guy who was who when, was suddenly to blame Glenn for Beck all the world. When was paid a million bucks to promote yeah. it on his show, and Fox News hosts went around across the country to to at to these rallies, celebrity driven. Yep. Which would be bad enough. If they're lying to themselves, to their people, that is, of course, bad enough. And it's toxic and it's it's destructive to democracy. But it's the legacy media picking up on those lies and taking them seriously and insisting the Democrats have to rebut them or answer them. Or this is the issue we're going to talk about now. And since you have no media of your own, we're just going to make you sit here and deal with this bullshit because you don't have any place else to go. You mm-hmm. got to meet the press. You got the New York Times, the Washington Post. You don't have a liberal media. So you'll sit here and answer our stupid questions based on the lies Fox tells. This is also the legacy media pretending that the ongoing Republican obstruction and sabotage of the Obama administration and all the lies about birth certificates and death panels was somehow Obama's fault, you know, Mm -hmm. because he was too aloof and too haughty and too, let's say, let's say it now, uppity, which was Michael Gerson's entire genre. Mm -hmm. during the Obama administration Mm -hmm. until Trump showed up and he said, oh my God, how did this happen? It happened because the late Michael Gerson and people like him made it happen. They lowered the bridge and let the monster into the castle. Yep. And millionaire Jesse Waters, millionaire Jesse Waters going on last night about, well, Obama's going back to Hawaii now, so he never cared about you. But it was about Obama being aloof and Mm -hmm. haughty and out of touch and not the result of the, at this point, blindingly obvious racism of the Republican base, which you're yep. not allowed to talk about. Yep. And, and that's the whole point. You're not allowed to talk about the base of the Republican Party being racist or try to fix it. This is the legacy media pretending that the nomination and election of Donald Trump was somehow all about economic anxiety. Isn't it always about that? It always is. And not the result of the now super blindingly obvious racism and misogyny of a Republican electorate brainwashed by Fox News. Mm -hmm. So that's why this all seems familiar, because it's just a rerun that gets worse and more catastrophic every time. Mm -hmm. Because now Mm -hmm. this is a legacy media pretending that the failure of the nearly flawless campaign that Kamala Harris ran against a convicted felon, traitor, adjudicated rapist an unhinged serial liar was somehow about the price of eggs and how snooty some imaginary liberal somewhere on some campus behaved and not the result of the now super duper blindingly obvious racism and misogyny of a Republican electorate brainwashed by the conservative media complex. Because to acknowledge that depravity and that barbarism and the sheer dead rat stupidity of the GOP base would destroy the fairy tale that the legacy media has been selling to the public for 40 fucking years. Yep. And they're not going to do that because no, they, yeah. they don't want to be, they don't want to be run out of town on with pitchforks and torches for lying to the public for 40 years. And by God, they don't want to give up their paychecks for doing that. So they're nope. just going to continue to lie about this until they are forced to stop lying about it. White racism, white violence, are always excused yep. and we will paper it over and paper it over and paper it over so that you, you aren't allowed to say it until five years later. Yeah. When what the, whatever the lie you told last time is exposed and has been exposed by liberals for five years and you suddenly notice yeah. that the tea yeah. party might've had some racist tinges to it, mm-hmm. but you know, the, the dirty work is done. The weapon has done its job. It's polluted the but ground. People water. got fired for saying that the tea yes, party was racist. Yes, they did. They sure as hell did. And canceled, Blue Gal. And canceled. And canceled. Which is why our message to the legacy media is the same as it has been for decades. You're not mentally equipped to fight this thing, and you never will be. Now, in the coming weeks and months, in addition to everything else we will have to cope with somehow, try not to be surprised by the sheer tonnage of recent history which our legacy media and our fair-weather allies will be bulldozing down the memory hole and the armada of lifeboats which will be hitting the water as media creatures scramble to save themselves and devil take the hindmost. As we've said many, many times before, there are actually two cults in America which are operating in tandem to destroy the American experiment, the MAGA cult 
and the both sides do it legacy media cult. And we simply can't fight them both and ever hope to win. Um, But as we've also said many, many times, if you destroy the center, the right will fall. Yeah. So the work that we do on destroying both sides do it is still absolutely relevant Mm -hmm. and critical to the fight ahead. And I heard, because I was listening for Charlie Pierce this morning on the Stephanie Miller show, I heard her talking about the both sides do it media and the both sides do it media and the both sides do it media. And I'm just, you know, the repetition of something that's true mm-hmm. works every bit as well as the repetition of a lie. Yeah. And and my applause to all of you good people out there who have been, who've, who've decided that's it. We're not taking it anymore. We're not going to pretend we're not, we're just at every opportunity, whatever platform we have in whatever way we can, whatever venue we're in, whenever we see it, we're going to call it out for what it is. And it's mm-hmm. become a punchline. And that really mm-hmm. is progress. It doesn't feel like it because everything else sucks so bad. But taking away the both sides do it lie from the mainstream media takes away their power. Mm-hmm. And you take away their power and suddenly that excuse that every MAGA asshole uses at the end of every losing argument. Well, both sides are to blame. Both sides are bad. What does it matter how I vote? Take away that from them. Take away the legacy media's support for that lie. And things will change. I guarantee it. Um, Now, we're going to do some art stuff. We're going to talk about a thing called negative space because I live in a house full of artists. And my (laughs) father-in-law is an artist. And youngest child is an artist. My wife's an artist. So I got to get this right. So I'm going to just quote from Wikipedia. And then my wife will correct me about all the stuff I got wrong. (laughs) Quote, Negative space is the empty space around and between the subjects of an image. Negative space may be most evident when the space around a subject, not the subject itself, forms an interesting or artistically relevant shape. And such space occasionally is used to artistic effect as the real subject of an image. Unquote. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh... It's the space left by the thing that isn't there, like Sherlock Holmes' story of the silver blaze. It's that dog that didn't bark in the night. Why right. didn't the dog bark? That's the clue. And that solves the, the that mystery. That's exactly right. right. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look hard at not only the legacy media, but the Pod Save Lads, the Bulwark, just squint real hard and see if you can tell what is missing as they're talking about, you know, the blame, blaming elite Democrats and and giving hot takes and all that. They're casting around for an explanation for what the hell happened. They will invite a rogues gallery of fools and fra- frauds and grifters to have their say. And they'll link to each other. Mm-hmm. But completely absent from the picture are liberals like us who called out the Iraq war, who called out what the Republican party was doing to Obama, mm-hmm. who called out the tea party as racist, et cetera, et cetera. Those, those voices that told the truth all along are not there. People who've been right all along aren't invited to their cocktail parties. Very deliberately and explicitly not invited. Yep. yep. So, and why, why is that, Drift Glass? Why do you suppose that is, Blue Gal? <laughs> why do you suppose that from the Pod Save Lads to the Bulwark to Morning mm-hmm. Joe to CNN to the New York Times, uh, you just don't hear people. I mean, they, they're they desperate. They're putting on this, this whole show about, uh, we have no idea what the hell happened. Oh my God, it's a catastrophe. And it is. It's all those things. We're not, we're not kidding about that. It is a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. It's a disaster. It's a calamity. It's horrible. It's the worst thing that will happen to this country in my lifetime, unless mm-hmm. it gets, you know, or it's the introduction to the worst era in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for answers. So how come you're not asking the people who told you this was going to happen? How come you're not talking to the people who were right all along? You might not like them. We might smell bad because we're dirty, smelly, hippie commies. And we, or we but- live on the East Coast and West Coast and we're elitists and we're snooty. Or we're at, we're busy killing babies all day long. We, oh, we can't yeah. spare the time. Um, you know, we're discredited every which way. But there's no denying the fact that at the end of the day, there were people who warned you this was co- this was coming and put up big flashing warning signs that not to go down this road or l- it would lead to disaster. And those are the very people 
who are providing the negative space on the panels. Those are the people who, if you look carefully, are missing. I've listened to way too many podcasts in the last week. I've listened to um, very well-meaning Christian theologians and ethicists who were talking about, you know, you have to have reverence for the... We're all human beings. God loves us all. You can't debase or degrade other people. You should open yourself up to be to, to be a listener. Listen to them. You must listen to their concerns. And I do want to sit with these very nice uh, white men sitting mm-hmm. around talking about ethics and the- theology, very learned, and say, what the fuck are you talking about? We've been listening to these people for 30 years. It's oh, not hard 50, to understand. 60 years. Yeah. This but, this is letter from a Birmingham jail drug class. Yeah, absolutely. Abs- no, I'm, I'm talking about uh, Rush Limbaugh and oh, yeah. the rise. But yeah, no, we've been yeah. hearing from them. We know what they think because they yeah. tell us all the time. Yeah. We've been listening carefully all the time. We we don't revere them. I, they're, they're one of God's children and we want them to have good lives. We want them to have clean water, clean air, good schools and so forth. But they're awful people. And they they have made themselves into awful people, and and so the answer from the, these people is, you know, love God and revere people and have reverence for the human humanity and everyone and be a good listener and and something something something, um, underpants gnomes something happens and we don't know, and absent from that discussion is someone who will tell them the opposite point of view, that yeah. no we have been listening they're terrible people. Listening to fascists doesn't do any good. You have to stop them. You have to take active measures to stop them or they will destroy you and they'll burn your church to the ground mm-hmm. because you, mm-hmm. your commie socialist church is a threat to their white supremacist ways. Right. So right. in all these places where discussions are being had by people, there is this notable lack of anyone there who lives in and among Republican voters who sees them, who goes to church with them, who talks to them, who's been talking about them for decades, to tell them the other side of the story, to explain to them why they're wrong or they're misguided. And that has to be because they don't want us there. They really don't want us there because we will bring receipts and opinions and harsh language to their discussion. And they don't want any of that because- Well, all that is damaging to their uh, advertising. Yes. And part of what they're advertising is uh, we're never wrong- and if we were wrong, all evidence of that has been destroyed. <laughs> right. So, yes. And, and if it's not their advertisers, if it's like the ethicists and and yeah. nice Christians, it's 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 destructive to their theology. Yeah. Because they can't yeah. have people being evil and yeah. being happy right. with being evil and winning and fit that into a theology of of loving everyone and being open to everyone and revering everyone because everyone's a human being. They don't well, fit together. There's there's a lot of a lot of right-wing assholes writing big checks to keep the church building standing. Well, yeah, of course. So, yep. you know, that's it. Anyway, uh, did I get that listen, about right? Blue I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. Listen to black women. Yeah. I, there were, there were a couple of, there are a couple of black knitters that I follow on Instagram. And uh, I, I, I cried because of their um, sorrow and yet resignation. Uh-huh. And they are in a place where I will never be. Um, but but the stoicism was what got me. You know, I can afford to cry about Trump's election. Uh-huh. And they just went, yeah, it's sad. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're going to get up tomorrow and work another day as a black woman in America. Uh-huh. Nobody cares about their maternal death rate in Texas. Nope. I care. But. Nobody so on Joe Scarborough's at Joe Scarborough's table gives a shit. Nope. They it's not real to them. It's not real to them. No. It's just not real to them. And 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 then the, their stocks are going to go up and they're they're going to get their tax cuts. And so it's going to be okay for them. Sure. Or if it's not, they're just going to turn around and say, see what you lefty latte sipping liberals did. Yeah. See yeah. what the left did again. The left did this to us again. Isn't it a shame? That Joe Scarborough's show is sponsored by Starbucks. All right. Yeah. Um. Uh. I want to read from uh, Jeff. No, you want to read from Jeff Jarvis again. Well, right. I know you wanted to talk about Republicans who've been banned from Fox. Well, I, that was the interesting part of sort of the 2020 hindsight was realizing, wait a minute, all those Republicans who were supporting Kamala Harris, including, you know, uh. Mike Pence, <laughs> mm-hmm. 
and 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 Liz Cheney and the Cheneys and right. so forth, and and Trump's practically Trump's entire cabinet from 2016. Uh huh. Fox didn't. Fox, I think, had Pence on once to say he could not support Trump for president. And other than that, this is this is Trump TV. This is as Trump TV as Mike Lindell. Mm -hmm. And they're being rewarded because a lot of them, a lot of the people appearing on Fox all the time are getting cabinet positions. I mean, this is just all part of a big blob of awful. Yeah. Yes, it is. And, and, and Fox elected Trump again. You want to talk? I, this is not latte liberals failing. No. This is isn't. Fox succeeding. Yeah. And, it, and it's succeeding with a long range plan yes. that goes back decades. And yep. it has, you know, it has sponsored mutant versions of itself that are even yeah. more crazy than itself. But it is the slow growth of a lethal fungus over the continent of the United States, right. killing everything in its path and swallowing it. And it is something that is now deeply rooted in our soil. There are people alive today who vote who have known no other media or political universe. New source at all. Their Fox whole News, Hate yep. Radio, and Donald Trump. And that's yeah. that's their reality. Yeah. And um, the Republicans who've been banned from Fox, where do they go, Blue Gal? Where are they going to go for a cup <laughs> of coffee? They all get to go on MSNBC. Oh, that's right. They get to go on MSNBC. And and basically run the Republican light version of mm -hmm. wouldn't it be nice if, and th again the people who are invisible in this equation are and I don't want to just mean you and me I mean anyone who would tell them anything that disputes their basic predicate mm -hmm. are not allowed in the conversation. That's how you know it's a dishonest conversation. They don't. They, I don't mean trolls. I don't mean assholes. I don't mean bomb throwers. I mean people who can show up who are liberal who could be like the. Liberal Pete Buttigieg, yeah, and show up on a on a Fox News panel, or show up on Morning Joe, or show up on any of these panels with these recently formed Republicans, and dress them down, yeah, and say if you want to diagnose a disease, you don't start at the moment it bursts through the skin and kills you. Yep, you want to go back to where what caused it, and you look around the table and said, "You fuckers caused this. How is it you people aren't begging us for forgiveness?" How come you're not sorry about this? How come you're not saying, what can I do to help liberals take the country back instead of shitting on them and saying the problem with Kamala Harris is she didn't punch up enough trans people? Well, you watch too much Morning Joe, Drift Glass. Yeah. And the problem is <laughs> yeah. we're not in the room. And that's why we're yeah. not in the room. Anyway, yeah. I've yeah. said enough about that. I, yeah, I'm going to go back to Jeff Jarvis on the socials again. Um, quote, and after the break, Joe Scarborough set up Donnie Deutsch to say, the Democrats need to step away from the woke. Is there no one there to say that the Republicans need to step away from, you know, racism, misogyny, and fascism? No, it's neocons all the way down, yep. unquote. Yep. yep. And then yep. there's this kind of schizophrenic shoot from the hip response from pundits that's been just wild to watch. Uh, listening to people rail against the stupid voters, the folly of the voters, and how could the voters have done this? And then they suddenly remember that you're never supposed to blame the voters. Right. So right. you can call the, the Republican voters stupid and, oh, my God, they're, they're contemptible. Oh, you can't do that because you can't blame the voters. And then, of course, they turn around and blame Democratic voters, liberals, because yeah. you got to find someone to blame. Never Trumpers sounding exactly like liberal bloggers from 20 years ago. Is is just it never gets I never get tired of hearing that about hearing yep. all the things that you and I wrote twenty years ago coming out of the mouth of Tom Nichols. But that oops 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 no no, no I got to slip in a quick shot at the left so I don't lose my you know wise conservative and exile credibility. So I've got to go. I, it, however angry I am with my party, I've got to take a shot at the liberals, the left, the trans folks, all those. All those people out there who mock me, who I block because I don't want to listen to them, um, because then I won't be – I'll just be a liberal. And I can't right. be that, so I have to be a conservative, so I have to remember to beat up a liberal on my way out the door. It's like – I think I used the example with you, the mezuzah outside the door of a, of a Jewish household. Right, right. They, they got to right. touch that I hate liberals thing every time they go in the house or else, I don't know, God will make them gay or make them liberal or make them baby killers or something. I don't know. But it's it's wired into their brains. This is how they operate. I want to I break here for a minute and okay. change topics. 
I'm pretty, as you can tell, I'm pretty cranked and I'm pretty He's tired. cranked up and angry and pissed and tired. And tired. <laughs> Very tired. So, But listen, uh, I wanted to talk about AI for a minute. Um, I came across a Reddit post last week that was very heartening. This was a guy who uh, either worked in a warehouse or was a dishwasher. I can't remember, but he was on his feet working Mm -hmm. um, at at a blue collar job. And uh, he had some palpitations. He had sweatiness, a little, little bit of shortness of breath. He wasn't sure what was going on. He kind of felt a little faint. So he asked his phone, you know, uh, using AI, what, what, is going on here? I'm sweating. I'm a little bit feel like I'm going to faint. Maybe is what's going on. And the AI came back and said, do you have any of these symptoms and so forth? And he had, he had like another exchange and a half or so with the, whether I don't know what Siri or whatever it was, but whatever program was talking to him through his phone said, you need to seek immediate medical attention. You may be having a heart attack. And rather than dismiss that and go back to work, he went, you know what? I might be having a heart attack. I better go to the ER. Uh And sure enough, he was at the beginning stages. He had a blockage and he was at the beginning stages of having a heart attack. And, you know, the title of the post was AI Save My Life. And that's an amazing thing. That's an amazing. It's amazing to me that when you and I started blogging and, you know, I'm celebrating my 20th blog anniversary this month. Um. 20 years, 20 years ago, we didn't have these phones. Nope. <laughs> we didn't have YouTube and you and I take car trips and we're like, how did anyone drive anywhere without uh, um, th- these computers in our hands to tell us which ago, turn to make? 20 years ago, asking my Blackberry to guide me to Burlington, Iowa would not have been successful. It would not have been successful. No. It would have been a paper map and, mm-hmm. and trying to navigate roads that we like this can't possibly be the right way. Well, it's maybe a single lane road, but it was maybe, maybe on my desktop computer. I could ask MapQuest for MapQuest. some help and print maybe. out something. Yes, but and we woe a lot betide. of us printed out MapQuest. Yes, yeah. but woe betide me but, if there was road work or a detour, then I'm lost. But this no explosion point. of AI has saved a life. That was mm-hmm. the point of this. Yeah, yep. So I do not use and drift class. You do not use AI. Um, I actually, on my knitting podcast as an exercise, asked AI to write me a knitting script, and then I took it apart on my podcast. So that was kind of fun. Um, but you and I don't use Claude or, or Siri to write scripts for the show. No. Um, but I, I have found Claude AI very helpful in my Crooks and Liars work. We have to keep our titles short. And so I will type in a title that's there that has all of the information from the post and ask AI to shorten it. And that tool is remarkably good. Um, It will keep all of the information in the title and make it shorter and make it concise. And that really helps me in my work at Crooks and Liars. Um, But, uh, and what I have been doing, I mean, we're off Twitter now and we'll be going to Blue Sky with this episode uh, pro left podcast on blue sky. Um, I have asked Claude AI to write tweets, right. Promoting our show. Um, and, and so last week I asked Claude AI to include in the tweet post for our post election show, our grave disappointment in the 2024 presidential election results and our determination to continue the work Kamala Harris reminded us to do in her concession speech. The more information you can give Claude, the better it does at writing a tweet or a, or a social media post that that is what you want it to say. And then I always go back and edit whatever Claude give, gave me. But it's a it's a nice jumping off point. But in this particular instance, Claude responded, and I'm quoting here. I need to clarify something. This is Claude talking to me. Uh (laughs) I need to clarify something. Since my knowledge cutoff is April 2024, I don't have information about the 2024 presidential election results, as that election hasn't happened yet. 
Would you like help writing a tweet about your podcast that doesn't include specific election outcomes? I can help craft messaging about continuing important work and maintaining determination in general terms, unquote. Uh huh. So Claude AI can save the life of a Reddit dishwasher, but cannot save the life of our nation. I can't do that, Dave. Daisy, (laughs) Daisy. Yeah. And that's a choice. It is. That whoever is programming these AIs cut off Hal at April. Well, because if Hal ran through this week, Hal would launch Skynet and wipe out the human race. (laughs) Would launch some bombs Um, on on some... uh, Elon Musk properties, probably. Yeah, there's a there's a story that uh, uh, the late Rod Serling used to tell about one of his um, one of his scripts for TV drama called I think it was called The Arena. Mm-hmm. I don't want, don't want to be 100 percent sure about that, but I'm pretty sure where it just got butchered by the sponsors. The sponsors controlled everything, mm-hmm. but you know he was told very it was very about a specific issue. It was about um, political parties and the voting of such, and he was told. You can't talk about any real issues. You can't use the names of political parties. And like, well, that's the whole story. So it, it was this meandering, jabbering mess that nobody mm-hmm. knew what was going on. And nobody knew whose side was on or what, what was at stake. And it was very, very ex- dispiriting to him. Uh, there was another one called, I think a town has turned to dust. I'm not sure. It was about lynching. But you can't mention black people and you can't mention lynching. Mm-hmm. So it ended up being like a corrupt sheriff in a Mexican border town or something. But it was the sponsors did not want to piss off or frighten or otherwise agitate the audience who they wanted to buy toilet paper and soap mm-hmm. with issues like politics, race, civil rights, or anything else that that, that Rod Sterling wanted to write about. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of the human version of Claude AI, which is yeah. I'm not going to talk about stuff that will piss people off. Yeah. So my the people who programmed me told me to stop paying attention to the news in April. So yeah. I'm very sorry, Fran. I can't do that for you. Well, and I think the conscious decision is made to to avoid any uh, conspiracy theories about Claude AI running the elections, right? Or, or determining any, or any the other outcome. AI. So right. we just decided no, we don't. Claude's yeah. not going to know about the election after April. Right. Well, and now I want to make an awkward transition. Claude, help me out here. I'd like to make an awkward transition from discussing AI to the uh, five stages of grief, which everyone listening to this show, I'm sure, knows about the five stages of grief. They are anger, denial, sleepy, dopey, and doc. Everyone knows Mm -hmm. that. Everyone accepts that. You all know that um, by heart. But I bet you don't know or hear nearly as much about the five stages of MAGA victory. Which is this very is some, interesting. Yeah. This is something yeah. that, that you don't hear about. You don't hear a lot about. You heard it here first. There are actually five stages of MAGA political victory. So, Which, which is, it's weird, but when you, when you hear what we're going to say, it totally makes sense. So the first stage is celebration. Right. We won, we won, weeping, praise Jesus, save America. God saved America from dirty commie, baby murdering. Coastal elites. Right. <laughs> I mean, right? right? Right. I heard that on local social media, literally. All yeah. caps, weeping, crying, Jesus saved us, Jesus this, Jesus that. Thank God for delivering us, Donald Trump, blah, blah. They really believe that. This is this is uh, Northern German slash Scandinavian Jesus that we're talking yes. about. Well, this is yeah. this is Republican Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, would, who, by the way, this Republican Jesus would put Reagan in hell. This is how far... To the right, the new Republican Jesus is. So the first first stage is celebration. But the second stage, the second stage is the blowback. Because these clueless mopes begin to transition from the fuck around portion of our show to the find out portion of our show. Mm -hmm. And they find out their friends and family, you know, people like us, who have very politely tolerated their very, very stupid opinions over the years, now have had it. Now yep. openly hate them and tell them so. Mm-hmm. And this mm-hmm. comes as a, a complete surprise to them. And so then comes the third stage, bargaining. Uh, look, this is just politics. We can still be friends, right? And this is just a disagreement. 
we're a difference of opinion. You guys are the ones that are supposed to be tolerant. Mm-hmm. Can't we get past this and we can go we can go hang out and you yeah. can still be my husband slash friend slash employee. Whatever. Yeah. And we can just yeah. go back to the way because it's just a diff- difference of opinion. Sure. I told the authorities where Anne Frank was hiding, but that's just mm-hmm. a thing that happened. And now it's over. And now we can get back to, you know, going out and drink, having drinks and having laughs together. Right. And this was also all over local social media as well. With with some idiot saying that, and then a hundred others just chiming in, a hundred percent. That's right. It's time for us all to be friends. Let's all get over this, and because the, they all think this is just a minor political difference of opinion, mm-hmm. and that's when the fourth stage kicks in. And the fourth stage is shock, yeah. genuine shock, tearful shock that their friends and family now want nothing to do with them, literally nothing to do with them. Because these are who we refer to on, on this podcast and on my blog as the tribe that rub shit in their hair. And the short version of that is their personal political grooming habits inside the MAGA bubble have become so grotesque that normal people are revolted by it. But the MAGA yep. clowns think their nauseating behavior is actually praiseworthy and beautiful because they only spend time with people like themselves, yep. complimenting each yep. other on all that shit in their hair and how gorgeous it looks. So when they step out in public and normal people want nothing to do with them, they can't figure out why. Now, to explain this a little bit better, I went looking across the internet for some specific audio and video, and I couldn't find it. It's Mm -hmm. from late November slash early December. This is a two-part episode from a show called All in the Family, which many of you watched during its first run. It's a very good show. The show's star was Archie Bunker, played by the inimitable Carol O'Connor, who was in real life in every way the opposite of Archie Bunker. And the other stars of the show were the immortal Gene Stapleton as Edith Bunker, Rob Reiner, who is now a director. He played Michael Stivick and Sally Struthers, who played Archie's daughter and Mike's wife, Gloria Stivick. Those are the four primary characters. Now, Archie was an openly bigoted, blue-collar, working man who pretty much hated the world and just about everyone in it. Now, he loved his wife, who tolerated him, and his daughter, Gloria, and his grandson, Joey, and President Richard E. Nixon. <laughs> he loved him some Richard E. Richard Nixon. Richard M. Nixon. Richard E. Nixon. I think he did call him that. He it called him Richard it all the M. time because he, yeah, he, yeah. he was written to be an idiot. Yeah. yeah. And that's about it. Um, he was very loudly and ignorantly opinionated about a whole bunch of subjects. He was... MAGA, 40 years before they called themselves that. Yep, yep, yeah. And then one day, as Archie does, he was in a bar shooting his mouth off about the black people. And if you've never heard Archie Bunker talk about black people, I urge you to go on YouTube and listen to him talk about black people moving into his neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It is language you would never find on television today. Yep. But it was raw and it was real and it was how people talked like that and how people still talk like that. On the right. Yeah. Anyway, he was talking yeah. about black people and his son-in-law. And that was Mike. And Archie was approached by a couple of guys in the bar who thought he might be interested in joining a group of like-minded, patriotic Americans. And he did. Yes, he and did. The uh, the episode in question was from All in the Family, November 27th, 1997. It was entitled Archie and the KKK. Because Archie was a stupid, angry man, he found out too late that he had joined the Ku Klux Klan and that they were going to burn a cross on his son-in-law's lawn to teach him a lesson. (laughs) I'm talking about a warning to Stivic to either change his views or keep them to himself. I'm trying for over seven years to get the guy to change his views. Then you are willing to join us in teaching him a lesson he'll never forget? Hey! You show me how to turn that guy around and make him into a God-fearing, patriotic American citizen, I'll do anything you want. Hey, I'll be with you for life. All right. right. That's the way we want you, Archie boy, for life. But even stupid Archie realized how bad this was. And when his family finally got the truth out of him, he tried to explain that he didn't realize he was joining the Klan. I didn't know. Yeah. These were just regular guys from the bar, who hated all the right people. 
How was he supposed to know they were in the clan? Right. They, they sounded just like him. They hated yeah. all the people he did. They they disagreed with all the people he disagreed with and seemed like the so, best people you, know, you could but imagine. But then I found out they were in the clan. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. And that's when his family turned their back on him. This was the find out, the fuck around and find out moment. Uh huh. His daughter and son-in-law told him they never wanted anything to do with him again and that he needed to stay away from his grandson and even Edith, even his wife, who is the most tolerant and forgiving character in the history of American television, I swear to God. Mm -hmm. She told him that what he had done was the worst thing he had ever done. A key line was his son-in-law, Mike, refusing to believe that this was an accident. Mike said, come on, Arch, I can't believe you didn't know what you were getting into. You couldn't possibly be that stupid. And Archie Bunker said, that's what you think. Yeah. And of course, I, that's a big laugh line. That's right. And they're all, and, and he says later on, he's going to have to do something he never wanted to do. He's going to have to sit down and think. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it was it, it was a very serious subject. It played for laughs. And of course, being a comedy from the 1970s, everything resolved itself by the end of the episode. Archie figures out a way to quit the clan and to threaten retribution if they came after him or his family and all is forgiven. And, you know, fade to black, roll credits. But that's not what ha- is happening in the real world of 2024. Mm-hmm. In the here and now, MAGA assholes who sound almost exactly like Archie Bunker, who are being disowned by their friends and their family, are so far down the fucking rabbit hole, they genuinely don't understand why this is happening to them. Mm-hmm. They're that lost mm-hmm. to reason. This is an article from the Daily Mirror. Uh, one example, it's all over social media. You can go find a lot more examples if you wish. Quote, the results from the election came a lot quicker than expected with a much bigger majority for Trump than opinion polls suggested. And for one American, the divorce papers have also come extremely quickly. He wrote online, I voted for Trump. My wife sent me divorce papers. What do I do? I didn't even know it was possible to be served divorce papers this quickly. Guarantee you, pal, they were sitting in a drawer somewhere. Yep. Waiting for you to to do that, take that one last step into the abyss. Or waiting for Trump to win. Yep. Yeah. Uh, his post has been shared widely and has more than 12.5 million views on X and sparked a fierce debate. The man also wrote, quote, I don't even know what to say. I'm shocked I married someone willing to throw away our entire life over politics. Last week we were happy. Today we're getting divorced. Guarantee you last week you weren't happy. You yep. were just fucking She wasn't clueless. happy. Your no. spouse wasn't happy. You were just clueless because they're all yeah. fucking clueless. Yeah. She won't have a discussion. She says nothing will change her mind. She insists that she's going to report my parents because they live off disability, but my dad does some cash work auto repair. So now I'm worried for my whole family. Yeah. yeah. Because her father-in-law is a right-wing asshole too. Yeah. And but he sp- gets government assistance uh-huh. and cheats about it. Yeah. So you fucked yeah. around. Yeah. And you, oh, anyway, um, it clearly seems, back to the article, it clearly seems that the relationship has quickly become acrimonious with a vicious argument now over possessions. He continued in this post, she wants me to buy her out of the house. We have 300,000 in it, plus I built a, or we built a four bay garage since we bought it three years ago. I can't afford that. When I told her this, as she was packing her things, she said, I guess you're finally going to really know how it feels to be fucked by a Democrat. Additionally, her name is on the deed, but not on the mortgage. I'm not confident I can reason with her because she's hysterical. You know how (laughs) chicks are hysterical. What do I do? Where do I start? How do I fix this? Is anybody else experiencing this in the wake of the election results? Unquote. Yeah. He wants to keep his house with the four bay garage. That's, what, wife. that's the advice he's asking for. He wants, he's not he going to keep his wife. He wants some doctor to find a pill to calm uh-huh. her down because it's just yeah. politics. It's not like our values are different or I'm a Nazi or I'm a fascist. Yeah. It's that our value, we have a little political dispute. You know, it's just like tax rates. We're just fighting over tax rates. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. So yeah. calm down. Well, and if Kamala Harris was president for four years, she could have put up with a lot. But she's she not going to put up with Donald Trump in the White House and an asshole husband. Nope. That's what's going on. Nope. You can leave now. Yeah. Yeah. She packed her stuff and left. And she wants half the house. And she's going to get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't just happening on 
Reddit with random anonymous Reddit <laughs> posters. No, it's not. Jesse Waters on Fox News. I was not invited to my mother's house for Thanksgiving. Apparently, there wasn't enough room. She said it was a scheduling situation and then invited me to come over on Black Friday. I told her, no thanks, I'll be at Best Buy. Yep. Yeah. You made your choice. I don't want you at my table. You've made your choice, Jesse. You made your choice. You yep. made your choice. And this is what this is what it cost you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we ask ourselves now, what is stage five of MAGA victory? Well, we're all about to find out together, aren't we? But none of us are going to be terribly surprised when it turns out to be a cocktail of stupidity, anger, blame shifting, conspiracy theories, and more lies than we'll be able to keep track of. Now, next time around, we might get around to reminding you that our never Trump allies, who've been treated like indispensable royalty by MSNBC and have enjoyed hundreds of millions of dollars worth of promotional considerations, book deals, TV contracts, op ed gigs, and actual real money paid to their projects and enterprises have produced exactly nothing of any value to our cause, nor have they improved the fortunes of the Democratic Party one iota. Having promised electoral miracles and warned us that the margins they could bring to the table would be the margin of victory, they've only managed to produce a very tiny, very expensive, wet fart. But that's next time. In the words of social media wag, zero-sum game, everything Rick Wilson touches dies. <laughs> Next time, we will be introducing a feature called Thursdays with Royco, in which we will share with you the laser-sharp political observations of the greatest haver of opinions in Chicago history. Today, we're just going to round ourselves out with a farewell, a plea to you to please get on Blue Sky and our love and appreciation. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like you to know that they're also on Blue Sky, and you should be too. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellowing and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024-25, GGBG Productions.